There is a device that works like magic and it's called a capo. When you apply it to the fifth fret, you can get the sound of the original recording. The capo is something you need to play along with your favorite songs in general. With this video, we will focus on playing specific strings. However, the primary focus that we're looking at is the notes that appear on your thinnest strings. These skinny string notes define the melody. The notes below that, they add to the harmony, and we can talk about the specific chords required. So we have a C chord here, which you're familiar with. We have the chord D minor. We have a chord E minor, which is this D minor shape, but we move it slightly and we focus on three strings. We have E7 played with three fingers. We have an F chord, but it's actually a D chord shape like this. We have this chord F minor here at the first fret where we focus on strings four, three, and two. That sound. We have the chord A minor, which you should be familiar with strumming from string five. We have a G chord, but we're not playing it this way. We're playing it actually with the middle finger, second fret, fifth string, ring finger, thickest string, third fret, and the pinky, third fret, thinnest. And then your chord G7. Let's take a look at the first verse because the verses all have similarities but with key differences to do with phrasing and also the way they come to an end. So putting down that C chord, starting out, we're gonna remove this finger here. This is our index, take it off and go. Third string, second string. As soon as you play those two notes, you know it's only two notes, you put your index back where it normally is, and then you play the inside strings. And then again, with the second string. So that first part is, oh, remember the finger off, by the way. Put it on. Now remember that E minor shape I was telling you about? You have to be able to jump into it. Make your F chord shape that I told you. And then twice on the thinnest string. Back to the C minor once again. Now you go to your D minor, and the interesting thing is you play like you normally would, four, three, two, one, talking about strings. Twice more. C chord. And also pay attention to the muting that I do. Um, my guitar was making some bad sounds when I first started this, then I realized. There's certain spots where you need specific muting with this. So I can show you, it'd be like... Muting here. For E minor. Muting. After the F chord. Muting here. That's typically muting with the, uh, the right hand for the most part. So that D minor, it's down, down, down. Then you quickly make a C. You add the pinky to the third fret, second string, and you make that E7 that I described the way I described it. Leaving out the thinnest string, by the way. Is that clear sound? Check it. Sometimes I find these Martin guitars found they, they sound kind of subdued, no matter how big it is. So that's your E7, you hit it again, just on the second string. And then you make your A minor, and you play the inside strings. Then you go to, so that A minor part is, right? And you make your F here, like I described. You play strings 4, 3, 2. Then you go twice. So from the A minor, we put down your A minor. And you have to be, because here's the thing, you actually put down the F chord a little bit sooner than that to make the whole thing flow. So say you had your, your E7, I'll, I'll break it down for you like this. So 
you've got E7 here, and you play like that, like so, and then you make your A minor, right? Now you instantly go to the F, so you can go. Well, sounds familiar, right? So A minor, right back here. Instantly go to F, and you go. So if we were to back up a little bit from the very beginning with the C chord, and you take this off, E minor, F, twice, and then your E minor, slide backwards to the D minor, twice, C chord, apply the pinky, Make your E7, A minor. Now here's the part I'm talking about. You go. Yeah, I gotta hold down a little bit better than that, but uh. Make your G chord now. Playing it this this way here. And you go like so. Actually, you don't really need to worry about the pinky with this. So you leave out the thinnest string and you just go like this. And you go first fret, third fret on the B string, second string. And you make a C chord. So that would cover the first verse of what a wonderful a wonder what a wonderful world. And you can start off the same way with the second verse, but I want to draw your attention to a couple key differences. So you'd go, apply it again, and then um, one of the one of the key differences to do with this is the the phrasing, so to speak. And if you're not really listening, studying the song, you you would miss it. It's just little details with the phrasing. So. In other words, how many times you hit a certain note. So starting out like before, this is the same. Same thing, B string. Make that E minor the way I told you. Make the F. Let's check this out. That time it's only a second time you tap it. It's little, little things like that. But that's how you get the authentic. For someone that really knows this song, they're going to know what's authentic. And then back to the E minor. D minor, just that part, just like before. Once you get to the, once you get to the, um, the E minor, twice, C chord, apply the pinky, E seven, way I told you, A minor chord, and your inside strings only, second string, and remember. Were you paying attention? Because this is the part where you do what I told you, where you get straight into the F chord. So, say from the C chord, uh, E7, A minor. Now, here we are with the F. So, just a second string, then three strings. hit it twice again before you get to your G like before just drum it from the thickest string one three now here's a key difference you leave out the thinnest string for the second verse gives it a different sound see the difference between that and this one string makes a difference you'd, you'd be surprised so then there's a bridge to the song with different sections to it. And you can make that G once more. You can play the open B string. As soon as you play that, you apply the pinky to the third fret second string and go like this. And you play it again. Three times and then like this strum. And the timing of this is particular. 
because there's a little pause. You can pay attention to how I play it in the beginning. Then the thinnest string, first fret. Then make a C chord and you can play all five strings. And you want it to ring clear when you apply the pinky because you're going to go. So that's the third fret, second string, and then an upstroke on the thinnest. You could even think of this section of the bridge to have two sections because you would put the G chord once more. You would play this time the, and really that now you can start up by holding the whole thing with the pinky on the third fret second string because you can go open G string, strumming every string except the thinnest now. Got that part? So that's the open G string, and then every string except the thinnest. You have to be prepared to land on the second string again. First fret thinnest string, open C chord, strum all five, apply the pinky again. So that'd be that first part of the bridge explained. There's a whole second part to it actually. Now you remain, you keep that C chord down, and you go. So you got to be prepared to get into A minor, so it's a different kind of A minor, too, by the way. So actually, if you want to take the whole chord off at this point, you just do an upstroke on the thinnest string, put the index on the third fret thinnest string, and then you make an A minor here, using the ring, fifth fret of three skinny strings, and you go... twice and then you make this D minor shape that's actually E minor and you play the th three skinny strings open and these open strings as always allow you to do changes A minor again twice so you're kind of going back and forth here E minor back to the A minor and remember only bar three strings twice E minor again downstroke on the thinnest you make a chord known as G7 play the all your strings this index comes off sorry that's the challenge of this and then the pinky applies to the third fret second string and you just leave out the thinnest now so see that seamless transition G comes off goes down So that covers quite a good section of it, but there is a third verse, and that also has key differences. So you put down your C chord, play the open G string twice, play the inside strings on your C chord. So like this. This is starting the third verse, by the way. That'd be the, that would be the beginning of that. See the differences? your E minor, make your F, make your E minor, and always go back to how I played at the beginning. I put a lot into the performance um, aspect of this. D minor, and thanks for all the views on the Beatles video, wow. Um, D minor, C chord, apply the pinky. Make your E7, so this goes towards the ceiling, this goes towards the ceiling. Pinky goes down, and you play your E7, leaving out the thinnest. Twice now in the second string. Make your A minor, play the inside strings. Now instantly put down that F, it's an F minor. You notice this wonderful world and a lot of minor chords, and quite, quite a lot of chords in general. Two, two, three strings, two, two, three strings, two, two, make your G this way, two fingers of G basically, that sound, one, three, C chord playing all, five, four, three, two, one. 
Now there's a special ending that's tagged on if you listen to the original recording, if you pay close attention to the vocals. And that is basically starting out your, this finger is already in position. You just go on the second string, uh, A minor, all five, four, three, two, one. Second string ones. Apply the pinky now to the second string third fret. Twice. Off. That's three picks. And you make your G that you should be getting used to by now. Leave out the thinnest. One, three. C chord. This time do not play the thinnest. For that sound. Very important little detail. Now slide using this ring finger. Slide from three to seven, like this. First you pick it and then slide, just like that. So I think that covers it. I actually don't even have a proper day off tomorrow, so I wasn't sure I was gonna make this video. I wanted to make this as like, I've been doing a lot of Christmas stuff and this will be a one to add to the end of the year videos, which before you know it will be at the end of the year. So thanks for all the support, guys. I gotta go.